My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's October 20th, 2024. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I lift up marriages in the body of Christ. Lift up marriages in the body of Christ. Give people the, the stamina that they need to make it through. Give people the wisdom that they need to make it through. Give people the anointing that they need to make it through. And give people the help and assistance they need to make it through. Let Lord, let Christus, ma Christian marriages be different. Let Christian marriages be different. Let them work through what needs to be worked through to see it through at the end so that the two may become one flesh. I pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony. Say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. 
When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody cause he's in control. There's no limit to what you can do. Cause it all belongs to you. Yes, it all belongs to you. No rushing now. Rockaway Cathedral, building God's kingdom in you. Pastor Marlon Curtin would love for you to come and worship with us at his in-person service and communion held on Sunday, October 27th at 3 p.m. Join us at Arvern Pilgrim Church, 74-16 Beach Channel Drive in Arvern, New York, 11693. We hope to see you there. Today's scripture of the day is from Matthew chapter 5, verse 32, in the King James Version. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. You can also donate at our website, www.therockawaycathedral.com. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Rock with Cathedral. My name is Pastor Marl. So today's message is called Divorce. Today's message is called Divorce, part of our Orthodox series. Now, now Orthodox is the search for the authentic doctrines of the apostles and the scriptures. The Orthodox is really an attempt by, by us. It's a call by us. It's a call for by the Rockaway Cathedral for churches to come together, for churches to come together and try to figure out and try to establish what is the truth in the scriptures about certain issues that we face today. We talked about the rapture, we talked about financial prosperity, and today we're talking about the fruits. What is the meaning in the scriptures when it comes to divorce? What is the meaning in the scriptures when it comes to divorce, when it comes to married Christian couples? So, so today's message is called Divorce. 
things, but it's not, not trying to endorse divorce or anything like that. It's not trying to endorse anybody staying in a violent marriage. But what we're saying is, let's search for the truth, the orthodox truth, when it comes to the issue of divorce in the body of Christ. Today's message is called Divorce, part of our Orthodox series. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony.
Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Today's message is called Divorce. Today's message is called Divorce, part of our Orthodox series. The scripture can be found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. We're going to read from the King James Version of the Bible. Please stand for reading God's Holy Word. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. You begin at the reading of God's holy word. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed adultery. So far the scripture. Lord, speak to your servant today and bless your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. That many years ago I saw this movie. Well, I, I found it very difficult to watch. Maybe you will, maybe you won't called The War of Roses, starring Danny DeVito as Gavin D'Amato, Kathleen Turner as Barbara Rose, and Michael Douglas as Oliver Rose. It's about a man who went to Harvard Law School, went to an auction, met a woman there, they fell in love, and they got married. They moved to Washington, D.C., he became a partner in a law firm, worked very hard, was very successful. She basically was a stay-at-home mom, homemaker. She made the house into a home. So when the kids were about to leave, when the kids were about to go to college, you know, she felt a little bit empty, so she opened up her own business. But at some point, she decided to, this is it. I, I just felt like I gave too much in this situation. He was always working. I felt it was a bit one-sided. She wanted a divorce. So they had some discussions about that. He agreed to give her the divorce. But the, her asking price, he felt, was too high. She wanted the house and everything in it. And he said, no, I paid for the house. I'm not going to give you the house. You can get the divorce, but not the house. And she was like, this house would not be a home if it wasn't for me. So so the, while the divorce was pending, they both stayed. They both lived in the house. And the movie's about the things that happened after the divorce got started. War of the Roses, War of the Roses... So you can find it on any number of platforms. Let's read the scripture again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. We're going to read from the King James Version. But I say unto you that whosoever should put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed, committed adultery. Uh, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, the New Testament is written in Greek. The Greek word for fornication means harlotry, incest, or adultery. It literally means, the Greek word for fornication means either harlotry, incest, or adultery. Figuratively, it means idolatry. And the actual Greek word, the, Greek, the word itself, the Greek word itself is called pornea. The actual Greek word is pornea, which sounds like pornography. I have three points today. Point one is the real reason. So, you know, lots of, you know, in the United States, lots of people get divorced. There's all sorts of numbers. You know, 40% of first marriages end divorce, 50% of second marriages, 60% of third marriages. There's all sorts of statistics about marriage and divorce in the United States. Marriage divorce in the United States. The one trend, recently anyway, since the pandemic is sort of a strange trend. Fewer people are getting married. Fewer people are getting married. They choose to live together, but those that do get married seem to be divorcing at a lower rate. So few people get married since the pandemic, but uh, fewer people are getting divorced. But, you know, these things happen. So, you know, like this, you know, there's all kinds of categories of people. But, you know, for those that get divorced within the first five years, they, you know, those typically those people, one or both of them just don't really know what it's like to be married. You know, they maybe they have an idealized view of what marriage is. Marriage should be this, marriage should be that. And for whatever reason, it doesn't live up to their one or more of their expectations and either one or both of them want out. So, you know, there's there's that. There's the getting divorced in less than five years. Oftentimes those people come into it with unrealistic expectations. Those expectations are not met and then they get divorced. 
But then there's a whole other category of people. And I'm not talking about the abuse and adultery. I'm not talking about those people. That's another category of people, but usually they last a little bit longer. But there's a huge category of people that are called empty nesters that, you know, they stay together, they're together for between 15 and 25 years. And when the kids leave the house, when the kids leave the house, they go to college, they go to the army, they get married themselves, they get their own place. For whatever reason, the kids leave the house and kind of sit around and look at each other and realize that for whatever reason, this is not going to work. You know, in part because they were working on keep, you know, working on the kids, working on their careers, working on each other. But when the kids are gone, that that was maybe the main driver, the main reason for them doing what they're doing. So when the kids are gone, a lot of people get divorced after the kids leave the house. And that's where this movie is. The kids are leaving or about to leave the house and the marriage breaks down. And, you know, these things happen. But, you know, one of the things about the movie is the, the wife, the, the, the woman, she had already kind of checked out. You know, she went through whatever she went through. She did the analysis and the calculation in her head. And she decided it was better for me to be divorced than to remain married to this person. And, you know, he had, you know, maybe some views, maybe he didn't. Maybe he was this neglectful, didn't understand. But oftentimes, as the case, the husband's the last person to find out. Didn't realize his wife had already checked out. So, so you know, you know, they may have had this problem or that problem. But sometimes these empty nesters, these empty nesters, when the kids leave the house, is oftentimes a prescription for divorce. Point two. Biblical reason. So. You know, the Matthew 5 is part of the, the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. So it's it's considered to be the greatest sermon in the history of all sermons. The, the greatest sermon in the history of all sermons. Jesus was on a mountaintop and spoke to not only to his disciples, but for the people that were in in this hearing. It, it may have been about up to four or five thousand people. So so he's preaching in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That encapsulates the Sermon on the Mount. So sort of in the middle, sort of middle beginning of this, he talks about the issue of marriage. So he talked about, you know, you know, there's a lot of, re I guess there are reasons that why people got divorced in the Old Testament. And it's my understanding that men were allowed to write a certificate of divorcement for their wife under certain circumstances, and they were able to get a divorce from their wife. If the wife displeased them in some way or whatever the terms were, in the law of Moses. But Jesus said, look, what I'm saying to you is, you know, you get a divorce, but you can't get a divorce unless the person you're married to commits fornication. So, you know, again, to go through the definition of fornication, uh, the, Greek, the Greek definition of fornication is harlotry, incest, or adultery. So if your spouse turns into a prostitute, whether it's a male or female prostitute, this scripture says you have a biblical basis to get a divorce. I'm talking about Christian marriages now. We're not talking about a Christian marriage to a non-Christian. That's another sermon for another day. But two Christians are married to each other. They go to church, they accept that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if your spouse becomes a harlot, it starts engaging in sex for money, that's a basis for divorce. And also incest, if your spouse is having an illicit relationship with a family member, that's a basis for divorce. And uh, adultery is when your spouse is having consensual sex with another person outside of the marriage. Your spouse is having consensual sex with another person outside of the marriage. That's also a basis for divorce. So prostitution, if your spouse is a prostitute, male or female, that's a basis for divorce. If your spouse is engaging in uh, sexual activity with a family member, child, you know, mother, father, cousin, brother, sister, that's a basis. And also, if your spouse is engaging in consensual sex with a third party, that's a basis for divorce. So, so Jesus is very clear about, you know, there, there, there may have been other reasons in the past 
for people to get divorced. But what I say to you now, in this new dispensation, in this new way of thinking, in this new way of thinking, in this new way of doing things, unless your spouse is engaged in fornication, don't have my permission to get a divorce. But that's, you know, that's really not what most people go through, right? Most people who get divorced in that first five years, they don't understand marriage. But for that second category of people, for, for the people that are the empty nesters, walking away from their marriage after 15, 20, 25 years, it's usually something else. It's usually something along the lines of, you know, the other person is not understanding me. I'm, I'm bored. Uh, I'm lonely. I am unfulfilled in the things that I wanted to achieve in the future. Uh, I'm having much less sexual intimacy that I want. I'm not getting any cuddling or any kind of, you know, romance in the relationship. And we're having so many arguments back and forth about either small things or big things, just constantly arguing, constantly butting heads. Or we just grew apart. You know, I have my friends, my spouse has their friends. I have my interests, my spouse has different interests. The things that we have pulling us together are much less. The things that we have that connect us to each other are much less than the interests and the things and the ideas that are pulling us apart. These are the things that, that, that came up in the War of Roses movie. You know, they, you know, they had these issues. These were some of the issues that were driving this relationship apart. But Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, if, if you are a Christian husband, if, if you are a Christian wife, if you are a Christian husband, if you are a Christian wife, if, if these are the things that are driving you apart, if it's a matter of fulfillment, if it's a matter of sexual intimacy, if it's a matter of romance, if it's a matter of always arguing, if it's a matter of going apart, if it's a matter of unrealized expectations, these are things that couples should try to work out. You know, you know so maybe you should go to counseling. M maybe you should do some prayer. Maybe you need to talk to some of your friends. Maybe you need to talk to your family members. M maybe you need to talk to coworkers. But whatever you need, maybe you need to read some books together. M maybe you need to go to a seminar together. But, 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 but Jesus is saying in this scripture, Jesus is saying as part of this sermon on this mind, as, as part of this greatest sermon of all sermons. If, if you are a Christian married couple, unless something like adultery is going on, unless something like incense is going on, unless something like harlotry is going on, try to, try to work it out. Be patient with each other. Be patient with each other. Listen to each other. Be kind to each other. Right? Be spiritual with each other. Have a date night. Go out every once a month. Go out once a week. Have some quiet time alone. Recall the things that brought you together. Do the things, do what's ever necessary. Do the things that are necessary to keep the fire burning. The Jesus, this is what Jesus' prescription is for Christian marriage. Ultimately, Ultimately, most relationships don't end because of fornication. Most relationships end because of other reasons. But so, so if if your marriage, if your marriage is is on the brink because of other reasons, the word of the Lord to you today is: if it's up to you, it's not always up to you. It's not always up to you. But if it's up to you, you try to work it out. If it's up to you, you do your part in trying to keep this marriage together. Point three, churches. So, you know, churches need to decide whether or not two Christians who are married together can get divorced in a biblical sense. Christians need to decide this. So, so all kinds of churches have all sorts of doctrines about marriage and divorce. Some churches say you can get a divorce. Some churches say you can't get a divorce. Some churches say you can get a divorce, but you can't be remarried. Some churches say you can get a divorce, but you can be remarried. 
So, so there's all sorts of, and different churches have different reasons that people can get a divorce. And different churches have different reasons, different circumstances under which people who are divorced can be remarried or must remain unremarried. So there's lots of different views, lots of different views about getting divorced, lot, lots of different views about remaining unmarried. So there's, there's a lot of back and forth. So, so what we want to try to talk about, and again, part of this is based on a book called Against Heresies, a book written by the Bishop Arrhenius, who was a uh, Greek, was Bishop of Lyon, France, back in the 100 AD, 190 AD, 175 AD, something like that. And he wrote a book because he was dealing with, they were dealing with, at the time, heresies, false doctors entering into the church. So he wrote this book. He's the one that came up with the term heterodox or heresy and orthodox, which is the collective understanding, collective understanding of the apostles' teaching and what and the truth of the scriptures, the collective understanding of the apostles' teaching and the truth of the word of God, both old and at that time the, the New Testament was, was being was already written, but people were collecting it together. It was ultimately canonized many years later. So so one one of the things that came out of you know and these things these things take time. And he wrote the book in the one nineties, but it wasn't until hundreds of years later that the Apostles' Creed came out. Something like three hundred something AD. And the Apostles' Creed, if, if your church is a subscriber to the Apostles' Creed, if your church subscribes to the Apostles' Creed, that, that church is orthodox. You know, and that, and that churches often have disagreements about all sorts of issues. But if your church subscribes to the Apostles' Creed, that's the collective wisdom and the collective teaching of the scriptures in terms of who God is, who Jesus is, and the Holy Spirit, and salvation, and things like that. So so, so don't walk around calling churches heretics. If, if, if a church that you go to, or if a church you're thinking about, if they subscribe to the Apostles' Creed, that church is orthodox. It's not you know, heretical church. They may have some doctrines that you don't agree with. They may have some doctrines that you really don't agree with, but they are ultimately a Christian church because they subscribe to orthodox teaching in terms of who God is, who Jesus is, and the role of the Holy Spirit on the earth. So, so we're not talking about that. We're talking about things that people disagree on, and many people disagree on the issue of divorce. So, so this call, this part of the message is for pastors. This part of the message is for bishops and presiding elders and those that call themselves apostles. Those in church leadership, those who are pastors and teachers, those who have authority over the, determining the doctrine of their church, determining the doctrine of their denomination, determining, determining the doctrine of their community, their faith community. Let's, let's, let's come together. Let's come together and let's try to find out the truth of the scriptures and the essence of the apostles' teachings when it comes to a wide range of issues. That, that's called orthodox theology. So, so, so let's together, we're calling for, I'm calling for, we're calling for the search for the truth, we search for the orthodox truth of the issues that concern all of us in this modern day society. That's it. You're here today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You've never accepted him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know you came for me. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again from the dead. Today, I declare that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. Therefore, today, I'm saved. My eyes are on the curtain. This is the Rockway Cathedral. We believe God's kingdom in you victory go in peace in Jesus name Amen Father we thank you for your word today we long to serve and please you in all we say and do help us to hide your word in our hearts and to use it as a guide unto our path in Jesus' name we pray Amen Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service and be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.